After we poured the stem wall courses, it was then time to backfill and then put in some gravel and get it all compacted, do some plumbing, get ready for the slab pour. So here you can see we used this Wacker um, walk behind compactor. I think the thing weighed 3,000 pounds. Um, we used that inside. We lift it up, put it inside of the stem wall. And then as we were backfilling with the excavator, I drove this around using the remote control and was able to get everything nice and compacted. So we did this in six inch lifts. So it took a little while. I think you'll see as some of the shots it took all day into the evening. And then it was also hasn't rained a while here. It was quite dusty um, and a little bit of an unpleasant task. It took a lot of work. Once we got all the backfill compacted, it was time to bring in some gravel. So I had the excavator here. Uh, it was towards the end of the day, so I'd bring in what I thought would be the right amount of gravel. I think it was about six to eight inches. It ended up being pretty close, although I did have to bring in a bunch of wheelbarrows full of gravel. Now I had to take those piles and get them leveled out by hand, and then use the laser level to make sure I was getting it all pretty good. I then had the plumber came in. He did the sub slab roughing which was plumbing for the island. On the left you can see where our pantry and uh, washing machine will be and then also for the shower and bathroom there. So at this point I had to, he dug you up and messed up the grade a little bit. So I went through, um, brought in more gravel, covered everything. Then I got a plate compactor and I spent the day walking around in circles getting everything nice and compacted down so hopefully we have a good base for our upcoming slab. I didn't want to run the plate compactor over the plumbing so I actually hand tamped um, endless circles all around where the plumbing was. So luckily that wasn't it was pretty straight line so I was able to compact with the plate compactor on both sides and then go in by hand and do the compaction. So I was able to get the plumbing and the electrical inspections done pretty quickly. And then it was time for sub slab insulation. I had considered originally doing the two inch foam board, but after talking with the spray foam guy who's gonna do the roof, I decided to do a spray foam under the concrete slab. And I think that was a great call. It, you can see here the guy's starting to put in, he goes around, we did three inches under the slab. He's able to spray it over everything. You can also see right about where he is, kind of right behind the guy now, that I think it was the hot water lines actually were a little high and I couldn't get them into the gravel, but they did get fully encapsulated by the foam. So hopefully that doesn't become an issue in the future. But yeah, as he went through and did the spray foam, it came out pretty level. I think, I don't know, maybe an inch or so out of level. Um, it's kind of a deep spot, end up where the bathroom will be. And actually with the concrete slab, end up having a little bit of a depression there too, maybe half inch. Um, hopefully they'll be fine under the bathtub. You can see them coming through here. They came out right in the morning. They did a couple hours. Um, and we'll, hopefully it provides a nice warm base for the radiant floors. We're doing a lot of work here, getting ready for our next pour and also for the slab pour. So, unfortunately, I didn't do a good job of recording. I've been just sort of heads down, trying to get stuff rolling along. But you can see we got our window bucks in, got strong backs. We're doing a slab pour tomorrow, so Monday. And then we're doing the um, uh, next wall pour, so I think it'll be about six feet or so we're doing that on Wednesday so hopefully we can at that point roll around scaffolding get up there for pouring into the walls you can see we got our window bucks in 
Silly enough, we didn't do that right when we got to him, like the instruction said, caused issues. So, because so, ultimately the opening sorrows do just want to grow smaller as you stack the blocks. So we got those in, had to force them a little bit. Should have followed the instructions. Got some strong backs on. Um, we're gonna do our final plumbing and patching where we had to meet blocks uh, on Tuesday. We can see we also laid out all of the radiant tube. So I'm doing a six inch slab. And we will, on that six inch slab, we got our radiant tubing on about one foot on center. Um, you can see kind of bathroom stub ups there. We're gonna have an island. Um, utility room, pantry, where uh, what boiler, washer and dryer, and a nice large pantry. Kids' room in the corner, our room up front. Um, you can also see we did spray foam under the slab. That one end seemed to come in not perfectly flat, uh, maybe within about an inch or so. Whereas I think I had the gravel within about a half inch across here. So Also, it's pretty nice though to work on, so we're doing all this. Uh, all the radiant stuff and even working on the walls. We were able to walk around the foam. It's a lot nicer than I think dealing with blue board. And you can see in the middle there we got a pilaster, so it's actually hollow blocks. So hopefully we don't have any issues pouring those. So then as we go on around here, the building is oversized by a sixteenth of an inch. So the fastwall blocks tend to fit perfectly. We do end up with, essentially on these two walls for whatever reason, I think our bucks might be a little off center. We end up with kind of the center there. We'll patch, you can see that's a cut block, then one up there. So essentially on this wall, and then you also see cut blocks right there and there. Um, we had to, Pretty much cut a block each time, but it's found out it's pretty easy. I guess I should show that. We just straight cut through with the chainsaw that leaves a little bit of, let's see if we can see, a little bit of a taper. It also takes out a quarter inch, and then the block fits back together nicely. Um, and that was all we needed here. So I think when, for whatever reason, probably when we put in the bucks or something, we moved them a little bit. So this wall, these two walls have to get cut blocks, but so far it's the only walls with cut blocks. And then you can see here on the pilasters, we actually had to use an all-purpose block, which still need to do the detail of that. Pretty much cut it in half, turn them, so we have a smooth on either end. We have a smooth face, and then use some old sheathing to tie them together, and then we've got quarter-inch all-thread through the middle. Um, I think we're also going to throw another piece, another strong back on the inside once we get the slab poured, and use that to true everything up. Otherwise, the walls seem to be nice and true. I guess it'd be plum, and we're pretty ready to go for the next big pour. And then from there, we might do one more up to the roof, uh, and then sort of done with the fast wall blocks. So, moving along. Here's the concrete guys coming out to pour the slab. It was two trucks and we called in 20 yards and ultimately that ended up being within about half a wheelbarrow of exactly what we needed so it was a little stressful towards then we didn't know if we'd have the full amount. Big. And then the other part of this is you can see the side closest to the camera was in the shade and then the part they're pouring right now was in the sun. Ultimately, the part in the shade ended up with no cracks, but we did get some small cracks um, in the part that they're pouring and screeding right now. Um, I think this is probably, there's supposed to be a retarder in both trucks, I guess I don't know for certain, but I'm guessing it's because the part in the sun just dried out a little fast, which was a pretty hot day, probably mid-90s. And I did come back and water everything, but the cracks started appearing right away in that slab pour that was in the sun. Um, not really sure what we could have done about that, though. And we did also have fiber inside of the concrete. Two days, we put down some ram board around the outside, and we got ready to do the concrete pour in the walls. This is my first time 
um, ever using a concrete pumping truck. And while it, it was definitely a little bit of a learning curve, and while being pushed around on the scaffolding worked, uh, made for a pretty difficult process as the guy running the pump truck would have to start and stop it, and you get whatever 20 feet of drop coming out after he stops the pump. Now you also have a lot of pressure of the concrete falling that distance, and as you'll see right here, we had a blowout right under the scaffolding. You can see part of the wall popped right out at the bottom when the concrete hit the previous pour. We were able to scoop out the concrete, get the block back in, and then screw a piece of sheathing over the broken block. And we got this put back together, I'd say it was probably a couple minutes, even though it felt like a lot longer. From this point on, I was trying to be pretty good about letting the concrete coming out, hitting one of the webs of the top block to sort of hopefully create less force on the bottom. But we ended up doing this all in three lifts, although it was pretty hard for me to kind of judge with the darkness in the wall because they're only a five inch cavity, so after a few feet you can't see. It was hard to actually accurately do it in three lifts. So in some places we filled it up in two lifts, some places we were able to do the three 24 inch lifts that we were hoping to do. But the whole time we were pretty worried about getting more blowouts and wondering if this was going to turn into a nightmare. Luckily we had no more blowouts and the walls did pretty good, although I think on the front I must have bumped the blocks or something. They actually did move maybe a quarter inch out um, towards the outside of the building, kind of next to the big windows on the front. And the other thing I had a little trouble with is so when he would stop as we got closer to the top, more concrete would come out. And I had to be pretty quick about getting that co extra concrete outside, pouring kind of in the uh, ditch we have around the building because we haven't backfilled yet. But so it's a fair bit of work, but as we went through this, um, hopefully the upcoming pour, I think we can do a little better. We also did build scaffolding the whole way around, so I can just walk. And I think ultimately that'll create a much easier time for me and allow us to do a little bit better job. We also have to put in a bunch of J bolts um, with the final pour. And it's a little hard to tell in here, but as I was pumping, I would fill all the blocks I could from my position, then grab the vibrator, vibrate the concrete down the bottom, then be moved on, and then behind me, Bodhi was following. He'd kind of screed off, not screed off, but he'd scrape off the extra concrete that was on the top of the blocks, and then position the rebar, help keep them, the verts keep them centered. This worked okay, but with it would have been nice to have more than three of us for this pour. So I definitely learned my lesson on the upcoming pour. I'm hoping to have more guys. And especially if we had any more blowouts, this would have turned into a nightmare. Also another case of where the owner being the GC isn't the best. Uh, originally I thought we were going to pour two more courses, so I calculated concrete for that. But we decided to keep it a little lower, as this was our first pour with the pumper truck. And as a result, I ended up sending back three yards of concrete. So I think that was almost $1,000 of concrete. So it was a pretty big waste. Um, definitely a little bit of a learning experience there. But you can see here we managed, I think this is the last um, lift here. Managed to get it all get it all through, get it nice cleaned up, get the rebar all nice and vertical. And at the end of the day, everything turned out great.